have that many friends High school was a nightmare that he almost couldn't handle Every day they picked on him and pushed him closer to the edge And he seemed to always take embarrassment and stride And even though he was a mess, he never let them see him cry They thought he was a target, they thought that it was fun But the hunter becomes a hunter cause he went and got a gun Shots rang out! Hey, welcome to Scon Biology. I'm Toontoad Miles, and we're going to listen to some great music and talk plants and pruning tonight. I'd encourage you all to check us out at the WordPress site, sconbiology.wordpress.com, trying to get the traffic up on that site. So email me if you have questions at sconbiology at gmail.com. Now on the intro track, we had Shots Rang Out from Rude King out of Dallas, Texas. I was trying to come up with a good description for this song, so I guess I'd call it some sort of great hybrid between a Less Than Jake song and something from Rise Against. So in a word, pretty awesome. Their band website is RudeKing.com, and they're on MySpace and Facebook, and right now they're fighting it out for a spot on the uh, Warp Tour, a uh, local spot on the Warp Tour. Uh, their album, Ruder, Better, Faster, Stronger, was released in 2011 and you can get it on iTunes. I also really just kind of like that album name, Ruder, Better, Faster, Stronger. It's sort of the Sitius, Altius, Fortius of the ska world. Well, like I said earlier, I want to talk about plants and pruning. I want to give you some pruning tips and ground you in some of the science of plant hormones and plant physiology to understand how the plants work and react a bit more. Now, some of you might be thinking, didn't he just do a plant episode? And yeah, I did. I'm still writing scripts like mad, but it's tough for me to go back to some of that basic theory. I've taken most of my plant science courses fairly recently, and I've been working pl with plants for the better part of a decade. So, teach what you know, I guess. So it's safe to assume that whenever I need inspiration for an episode, or I have writer's block, I'm probably going to go to plants. Okay, now I'm sure at one point or another we've all drawn the same picture of a tree. Same brown rectangle for the trunk with a little green triangle on top tapering to a point. This little number. And if Bob Ross were still around, he'd probably call it a happy little tree. Now we've probably all become better artists since then too. But that green triangle illustrates my point. For such a simple design, it really kind of captures what a tree <laughs> looks like. See, trees grow to a top point. That is to say, the top, or the apex, is growing more vigorously, more strongly, than those side branches. Now we call this apical dominance. The top growth is dominant over the side growth. But how exactly does apical dominance work? Well, the top of the plant is secreting a hormone called indole-3-acetic acid, or IAA for short. Now, you probably already knew that the human body produces hormones. These are chemicals designed to carry signals across long distances. Well, plants produce their own plant hormones, and IAA is one of them. The IAA signal is produced in the top of the plant and travels out to the side branches. In the side branch, it basically has the job of saying stop, as in stop growing. We've got a good top on this plant, so you guys can just chill out, hang out. You don't have to worry about growing. We're the top. We got this. So the side growth slows down while the dominant top of the plant continues to grow at normal rate. So what happens if you remove the top of the plant? If you cut it off? Suddenly all of that IAA it was producing is gone as well. So that stop signal that was going to the side branches suddenly goes away. Take away stop and you get go. So when the top of the plant gets lopped off, the plant begins to 
grow less like a tree and more like a bush. A lot of those side branches just start flushing growth like crazy. So there's your pruning technique, really. By cutting off the tops of trees or shrubs, you can get a bushier plant. The plant grows less up and more out. Again, making for a bushier plant. So if you want your hedges to fill in a bit more, be sure to clip the tops to encourage them to flush more side growth to fill out that space a bit more. Now, in the forest, treetops break all the time. The top can be blown off in a windstorm, or struck by lightning, or struck by another falling tree, or disease, insects, any number of possibilities that would kill that top. The tree branches will begin to grow, those side branches. But after many years, decades even, some of those branches may begin to turn skyward, to grow up towards the sun, turning towards the light. And by turning towards the light, the tree is basically attempting to set a new leader, a new tip, to reestablish apical dominance. But sometimes more than one branch turns upward. Sometimes many branches try to establish themselves as a leader. And this can create the image of many smaller trees springing up from a single larger tree, a single large trunk. And this may perhaps explain the appearance of the record-setting arco-giant redwood. And we're going to put up a picture. So it's almost as though there's a whole other forest in the canopy, when really it's just one massive tree with multiple leaders. Now in the case of redwoods being so massive and all, one really has to wonder, just how far does the IAA signal travel? Can it travel hundreds of feet? I don't know. And to be honest, I looked at, I tried to look it up. I couldn't really find an answer. Someone out there knows, hit me up with an email. We'll get it on the site. Now we're going to close with some more basic pruning tips. Okay, so if you want the plant to grow bushier, you want to cut the top. Get rid of apical dominance, and those side branches are really going to grow. You can turn the idea on its head. I started removing buds from the side branches, so only the leaders were growing. Now I basically had two leaders and essentially pruned the tree to look like a tuning fork. Now with heavy pruning, there were really only two growing points on the plant, here and here. So in the case of this example, they'd be my fingernails. Now sometimes a plant can have too much apical dominance, where the side branches don't really fill out. It's just growing up and fast. So the top of the plant gets kind of wobbly from growing so fast. So when a plant looks wiry and not too full, we say the plant looks leggy. So how do we deal with a leggy plant? If you make a cut in the bark below the tip, it's going to slow down the growth rate of that tip. Now don't cut a full circle in the bark. That's called girdling. And basically what happens when you girdle is going to kill everything above that girdle. You cut a complete circle in the bark, basically no nutrients are going to pass above that. And so that's what kills the plant when you girdle it. So don't cut a circle, just cut a nick in the bark, just a little slit. Why? What's happening? Well, the plant has a capillary network, sort of like our circulatory system, or perhaps more simply, like a whole bunch of straws. It uses the capillary system to transport water and sugars throughout the plant. Now, have you ever used a, a straw that had maybe a small hole cut or punctured in its side? It doesn't work nearly as good as an undamaged straw. It's harder to drink from the straw that has the cut in the side because you're losing some of that suction. It allows air and water to enter and escape freely through that wound. Now the same is true for the plant. The cut you made will keep the top from getting as many nutrients, thus slowing down its growth rate and making the plant less leggy. Now lastly, we're going to talk bonsai, the art of pruning trees to miniature size 
for artistic purposes. Now, I've never worked with bonsai before, and maybe I can get someone on the show to talk about it who has, but I can certainly appreciate the artistry that goes into making a good bonsai. Seriously, do a Google image search for plant bonsai, and just marvel at some of the artistry involved. Now, making a good bonsai takes years of dedication and years of capable, careful maintenance. Now, it's pretty amazing to think that the same tree that you find growing wild in the forest can be kept in a miniature size in a pot for years or even decades. Now, I'm Two Tone Miles, and I hope you learned something. So playing us out, we got David and Goliath by the Georgetown Orbits. Uh, I did a CD review for Supersonic a week or two back, and I'd recommend you check out uh, that review as well as the CD and the band themselves. Their website is georgetownorbits.com. This is one of my top three favorite tracks off the CD. This is number three for me. I already featured one and two. And I think this track does a great job of showcasing their unique sound. So, yeah, hope you like it. Uh, next episode, we're going to have some uh, Waffle Stompers and who else? I don't know who else, so I better get on that. All right, take it easy.